Hi there, this is Philip from Beyond the Tabletop. In this video, I show you how I kitbash my Inquisitor model, Lady Eleanor Greyhorn. As you can see here, I've already made a fair bit of progress on the model. Now, I was tempted to do a complete step-by-step -step recording, but because of the complexity of the model, I thought it would be better just to show you a few key stages and talk you through what I've done so far. So if you've been following me on Instagram or you've been listening to the podcast I'm involved in, which is called Lookout Sir, then you might have heard me talk about Lady Eleanor Greyhorn already. It's sort of my main project for the year, building up to No Retreat 8. As a lot of you know, I'm a huge Deathcore of Krieg fan, but I wanted to add some character and flavour to the army, so I decided to add an inquisitorial retinue to the force, just to add some more story and narrative-driven character to the army. So I eventually came up with the idea of Eleanor Greyhorn, who I'll be using on the battlefield as Eisenhorn, hence the similarity in the name. This model also allows me to sort of join in more with the Inc. 28 community, which is a really creative aspect of 40k, all to do with the old Inquisitor game. I highly suggest you check out the Inc. 28 Facebook group if you want to know more and to get involved. At this stage I won't go too much into the character of Inquisitor Greyhorn. I've written part of a short story which I'll be posting alongside this video, so please check that out at beyondthetabletop.com if you want to get to know more about her character. So let's crack on with what I've done with the model so far. So the main model is based on Yvrain, which is one of the Yunari special characters. So she's got this amazing flowing dress and obviously the corset and is the most suitable base for the model. In fact, she was sort of the inspiration behind it to start off with. For the head, I've swapped this out for a resin piece from Forgeworld. This is the female Stormcast Eternals upgrade kit. Currently, there aren't a huge amount of decent female heads for 40k. You're much better off looking at either Necromunda using the Escher Gangers, but I don't think the size was too suitable. But the current range of Stormcast Eternals actually she does have a really good range of female heads. There was a few I was looking at, but then Forgeworld released their resin upgrade kit for the Stormcast Eternals, so I bought that, and this is one of the heads that I'm using, which I think works really well. For the bandage that's wrapped around her face, that's just made out of green stuff, rolled super, super flat, and carefully placed and cut into position. One of the things I like about the character of Greyhorn is that she's effectively a techno-puritan and doesn't believe in any form of bionics, which is why she has this face covering her scarred eye. Now, the inspiration for this and actually the inspiration for the original character is taken from the movie The Favourite. I'll put a screenshot up now of the key scene that I'm referencing, and as soon as I saw this in the cinema I knew I just had to recreate it in a model. Now moving down to the torso part of the body, I carefully shaved off all the extra detail that was on the arms, which is this like banding from the bodysuit and I removed some of the decorative detail. I've kept some of the decorative necklace detail, so it now looks like a cross and a piece of jewellery. I'm still not entirely sure if I'll keep that on there or if I'll take it off at a later date. And then when it comes to shaving off this detail, what I've done is I've just used a sharp knife to cut it all off, and then I've used some Tamiya Extra Thin Cement, and I brushed that onto that area, which helps smooth out the plastic. And then a similar thing to the corset piece, which is a separate piece. I trimmed out all of that detail very carefully and smoothened it off using that extra thin plastic glue. Then the brass etched Inquisitor symbol comes from Forgeworld. Unfortunately, this is sadly out of production. They used to do a variety of brass etched kits. On this kit, I do use both the Imperial Aquila one and the Inquisitor ones that they used to have. Looking at the seal up close, you can see there's these three tiny rivets, just because I wanted to add some detail onto that area so it's not too flat. Now, these are tiny little beads that come from a Brita water filter. I think I've mentioned this in a few previous videos and I should do a dedicated video all about making rivets. But basically, I found three that were of the same size and carefully sliced them in half and then used some super glue to attach them to the model. For the flat area of the corset, I think I'll keep that plain for now. I'll try and add in some lace detail when it comes to painting the model. You can also see that there's a pin protruding from her right arm. This is for mounting her arm in a slightly different pose because originally it is pointing downwards. So the plan here is that I can add in her new arm so I can slot it in so she's going to be striding forwards shooting her gun. 
So the reason why that pin is in place is because to get the pose correctly, I need to readjust the arm so it is actually mounted slightly further forwards than it would have been from where I actually cut it off the model because this was all one piece originally. At some point later, I will glue this in and green stuff this all in. When it comes to the gun itself, I had to construct this from a few different pieces. The gun itself is from the Tech Priest Dominus kit, and then the hand with the pistol grip is from the Escher kit from Necromunda. And then you can see here along that green stuff line where I basically had to join the hand to the original Yvrain arm. And then the join line between these two pieces is just sort of along that cut line. So this one is carefully constructed between the hand piece here, the rest of the pistol and then Yvrain's arm just there. So it was a little fiddly to construct, but I did manage to pull it off. Now I do think the gun looks maybe a little bit on the large side for her, but I did want her to be striding forwards, shooting one of those old style Jordan pistols, again inspired by another scene from the favorite. And lastly, we come to the boots. Now this is something I've actually spent the majority of the time on on this model so far, but I think the effort has paid off really well. These are her original legs, but I just scraped off all the extra detail, such as the banding and the bracelet that was on there. And originally you could see her toes as well. So she obviously wasn't wearing any footwear. Now I had a look around a few different kits and I didn't have anything suitable. So I decided I would just make the boots instead. So to do that, I basically covered the toes with some green stuff and then just shaped it into a tip, which makes it now look like the end of a boot. And then for the top, what I did is basically added on some extra green stuff around here. I basically rolled a small sausage shape out of green stuff, wrapped it around the thigh, and then I just shaped it so the bottom end blended into the leg and then the top end basically sticks out. So that gave me the shape of the boot. Now it's a bit of an illusion because I haven't built up any extra thickness along the rest of her leg, but I think it works really well and it's something I might use for her arms so it looks like she's wearing gloves. Then I had an issue where she's got this steeped arch because she's effectively walking on tiptoes. So I decided to create a stiletto for her. Now. It does feel a bit impractical in 40k, especially when she's going into combat that she's going to be wearing some heels, but it feels like it's the best solution to work around this pose so it looks correct. To make the heel, I had some thick plus struct card, and basically I heated it under a flame, and then as soon as it started to warp, I basically pulled it tight, which created this nice little stretch effect going from the small bit that I pulled to the original thickness. And then once it had cooled down, I could just cut it to shape. I could then just glue it in place with some plastic glue and then just green stuff at the edges to smooth it out. Now it's worth mentioning that the back boot isn't really going to be visible because the rest of the dress is going to be covering it up. It will only be visible at most from the gap in the front of the dress. However, I decided to do all the work on the back boot anyway, working out the method of creating the boot on this one first. It's a bit of a practice because this boot won't be that visible, so if I do mess it up, it doesn't really matter too much. And then when I've got that method down, I can actually do the front boot, which is the one that really counts. With the overall shape created, I decided to then move on to the detailing. I left the green stuff to cure overnight, so I wouldn't mess it up with anything else. And then I moved on to the next step, which was creating the little skull symbol. Now this is some detail that I don't really think I'd be very good at sculpting myself, so I decided to do a press mould. So I've got here Inquisitor Greyfax. She's still on the sprue because I've not built her yet, but she's got this amazing detail just above her chest. And you can see it's a tiny little skull in a little disc shape. So I just made a simple press mould out of blue stuff, as you can see here. And then here's the inside view. What I'd normally do is fill that bit with green stuff, let it cure, and then I'd pop it out of the mould. What I did is I'd filled it with green stuff, then I carefully knocked it out of the mould so it didn't lose any of its shape. And then while it was still soft, I carefully applied it to the model and then carefully pressed it in place. The green stuff is adhesive, so it will happily stick to the model without the need for any glue. But what it does is it allows me to press that green stuff and shape it so it conforms to the curve of the boot which would be a little bit more difficult to do if the green stuff had fully cured and then for the strap going around I just rolled out a bit of green stuff into a sausage wrapped it around the boot and then using a mixture of my modeling tools and a knife shaped it out into a strap 
and then carefully indented it to create a little bit of detail. I didn't need to worry too much about the detail at the very back of the straps, especially the back strap here because that one won't really be visible. It's mostly just from this front angle which you'll be able to see the boot. Lastly, I did some armoured beading onto the boots. This was something I was quite keen to try. I was a bit hesitant about doing it. I was really happy with how the boot looked and I was worried I could completely mess it up at this stage, but I just had to sort of brave it and give it a try and see how it would look. I just needed to refer back to some of my own artwork for Greyhorn, as well as looking at some of the boots from the Escher kit, which have similar sort of spiked detail. I decided to just do this all by eye. So I just used an engraving tool to mark out the initial placement for all the holes. I then just use a drill bit to carefully drill down into the model, just ever so slightly. These little beads, which are again from the Brita water filter, but a much larger size than the ones that you see up here. So when I was drilling this hole, I just drilled down ever so slightly so the beads would be sitting halfway into the model, which allows them to protrude out and create that nice armoured pattern. Now slightly annoyingly, the middle one is slightly off to the right rather than being perfectly lined up, which is a little bit frustrating, but there's not a lot I can do about that. I could cut it off and completely re-drill the hole, but I think are more likely mess it up at this stage so I'm going to keep it as it is and ultimately the boots are a minor part of the overall model so overall I think these look really well when it comes to the back boot I've just done this side because I can't actually get into this side because I've already added it in part of the dress now the reason why I added in this piece is just to add some structure and support for the leg because it's quite flimsy but also is another part of the model which I can actually hold it from which is a lot easier when I'm working on the boots to be able to hold it from here than actually holding onto this leg because it made that leg is quite fragile in terms of how it's supported by the model. Overall, I'm really happy with how the boots have come out and I'll now carry on with the rest of the model. Once I've made a bit more progress on the model, I can come back and show you what I've done. As you can see, I've now gone and completed the Inquisitor. I'll just walk you through the steps that I've taken. So with the boots all completed, I could then add on the original dress, making sure to remove some of the detail, such as the little loops that came around that were decorated in all the soul gems. So I removed those and just green stuffed the gaps where they were meant to join to the model. And then again, I had to do a similar thing on this side, just uh, green stuffing a few areas. So I removed some of the detail at the top, including where some of the gems would be. I decided to keep these gems just down here as nice ornamental detail for her dress. And to add in some extra detail, I carved out some of that lacing so I could place in a brass etched Imperial Aquila. So I just glued that in there and then I just had to re-green stuff some of that detail just so the lacing all sort of matched. Likewise with the top part of the dress that there was an extra piece that could be added on there which contains the daggers but I didn't need that piece particularly so I decided just to remove it and re-sculpt some of those folds using green stuff. When it came to the arms I made sure to do this one first. So this was quite a complicated build. This is one of the Admech pistols. I shortened to remove a revolver style barrel so it's much more like a dueling pistol which is what I intended it to be. So that was joined up to about here. This portion here with the actual handle that's actually from one of the Necromunda Escher models and you can just about see here where it joined onto the original arm. So basically I had to pin three pieces all together, make sure they were all glued so they're sort of structurally sound. And then with the actual arm piece itself, I had to reposition that and pin it in place to attach it to the shoulder. And then just using green stuff to fill that in. Then I decided to add in some lacing detail because this whole piece is going to be painted up as a lace glove and similar to the boots, I don't actually need to green stuff and create the whole glove, I just need to create the end trim piece which will create the illusion of the glove once it's painted. You can probably see it a bit clearer on this side. To create that effect what I did is I just sort of rolled out a sausage of green stuff and wrapped it around the model, blended it smooth in the same way that I've done the boots down here and then I used a knife just to score the very top portion going all the way along and then using the back of a drill bit just indenting a small dot in the centre of each of those squares that I've created 
just to create that lace effect. And then once I had cured, I just trimmed off the excess with a knife, basically cutting all the way along the bottom and removing the excess green stuff. So that was how I created the lace gloves. When it came to this arm detail, the original model has a kind of gauntlet. So what I did is I just carefully removed it all using a knife and uh, carefully scraped away, cut away until it was all removed. And then I just used a mixture of scraping with my knife uh, using sanding sticks and even using plastic glue to help smooth out that whole arm. And then once that was done, I just wanted to re-add in the jewel that should have been there because that needs to match the one on this side. So all I did was create a press mold of this one using blue stuff and then from that I could create a green stuff cast uh, to create a replica and then I could just glue that in place. In terms of the original sword that this model was holding, I just carefully cut off all the pieces and removed as much of a hilt as possible. And then lastly, I drilled it out with a drill bit. And then I just increased that hole in size until it was large enough that I could add the staff into the model. So the staff is the last piece of detail that I added to this kit. So if I show you in profile, I can give you a rundown of how I built this staff. So the length of the staff is made of one piece of brass rod. Then I had effectively some telescopic tubing of brass, which is a slightly larger piece that I could mount directly onto that first piece of rod, which gave me this piece and also the end piece just here. Then I decided to add on some extra detail. Now I wanted the staff to slightly resemble Eisenhorns because again, this is an Eisenhorn proxy when I'm running it in 40K. So I loved the idea that there was a skull mounted on the staff but rather than just using eisenhorn stuff i decided to create my own so this piece while similar to eisenhorn's isn't actually from his kit it's from the old forge world rogue psyker model which is now part of the necromunda kit there was two of these that sort of stick out from his back so i just took one of those uh, cut it to shape and drilled a hole in and then to add in some extra detail i kind of scored in a little eye onto his skull just to represent the Inquisition. And then to add in some extra detail, I added this piece on top. This bit's from a Blood Angel kit. I believe it's either the Captain or the Terminator Captain. It's an iron halo, so I just had to carefully mount that. In fact, I pinned it at the very top, and then just added in some plasticard rod, just as an extra bit of detail into that centerpiece. So you can see on both sides how that looks. So you can also see some extra riveting detail just here, once at the front and once at the back. And then also on the bottom of the staff, I've actually done it at all four points. And then rather than have the staff absolutely flat, I decided to kind of round it off, which I'm probably gonna paint up as a jewel of some kind. So that was just some super glue mixed with baby powder, which is why it's got that slightly cloudy effect and I just blobbed it on, and then it sort of just smoothed itself out all nicely to create that nice effect. Then the last piece of detail that I wanted to add in was the banding on the staff. I thought about keeping this plain and just painting it up, but I thought it would be a lot better to actually physically add on this detail. So I had done this before I had mounted the staff onto the model, just so I could complete the banding all the way along. And to do this, I've actually just used very thin paper. So what I've used is Wufu modeling paper from VMS. It's basically super thin paper, which is excellent for modeling. And I've actually started to use this in a lot more of my projects, which you'll probably see in future videos as well. So all I had to do was cut out some thin strips of paper. So I applied some PVA glue to the paper and then I started at this end and slowly wrapped the paper all the way around and I just kept going. Now a few times the paper tore and sometimes I just run out of length of paper so I could just repeat the process with some new stuff and I would just go all the way around until I was complete. Now you can probably see in some areas like here I managed to give the banding really good and then in others it's sort of slightly bunched up unfortunately just up here but I think overall the effect was well worth it and it will look pretty good once it's been painted up. So once all of that had been glued in place, I just made sure I left it to dry and then I went back over with a thin coat of PVA mixed with a tiny bit of water and then to make sure that this paper was set in place, I just went over the whole piece again 
with some PVA glue, a little bit mixed with water, just with a brush to apply all the way along. And then again, let that dry. And I just did that several times over. And the great thing about PVA glue is it really shrinks up. So you don't ever really lose any kind of detail. I can run my finger along here and I can still feel those individual ridges of the banding. So I've not lost any detail by coating it in PVA glue. And then once that had dried, I could just carefully thread it through this arm. And then actually I added this cap on at the very end because that piece would be too thick to go through the handhold that I had created, which is what created that little bunching just here where the paper had got slightly pushed down when adding this end cap on. I've temporarily just blue tacked her down to her base because I will paint her up separate from it and add the base on at the very end. So that's all the steps in creating my Inquisitor Lady Eleanor Greyhorn. I did think about adding in some extra detail such as her holster for her pistol as well as her other war gear items such as a book and a power sword in addition to some grenades. But I realised that adding in that extra level of detail would just clutter the model too much to the point where it wouldn't look particularly good. So I've decided to add all of those pieces onto another character who's going to be holding onto her war gear. But I'll cover that character in a future video. So I've completed the very last step of the model and that's the basing. So if I just remove this model because it's not attached on, I've basically done a mixture of like broken paving slab, which is very similar to the style that I've done uh, on my assassins. And this broken paving slab style is what I'll be doing for my Inquisition models, just to tie them all together. However, all the exterior areas will be textured up with that Sterland mud, which is what I use on my Death Court of Krieg models. So it will actually be loosely tied in with my Death Court of Krieg army, but the broken slab effect will just make them stand out ever so slightly so you can see the two distinct forces. So what I've done is just use some thin plaster card and cut up into some random shapes and I've basically created the paving slabs and glued that in initially. So you can see that I've done some extra details such as chipping like here and here whether that's from weapons, bullets or age and then I've scored in a couple of extra details of the cracked and broken stonework and then to fill in the area and to create a bit more of a rough surface rather than just relying on the sterling texture mud at the very end I decided to sort of create that texture to start off with and I can then just paint it up appropriately. So I decided to artificially create that textured mud by using a mixture of baby powder and super glue mixed together to create a thick glue which I could then apply to all the cracks and all over. And then what I did is I sprinkled more baby powder on top which gives you a nice rough finish. So if I show you on the side and look around you can see that it just gives you a nice sort of lumpy texture all the way around and I can refine that further later on. Once I finish painting this up by adding maybe a little bit of the sterling texture mud. The last bit of extra detail that I wanted to add in was a skull and a candle on top. Now the candle is using the method that I've used in a previous video, which I'll link in the top right hand corner now. So it's a plastic card rod with a small bit of wire in the middle and then using baby powder mixed with some PVA glue to create that dripping wax candle effect. And if I just add the Inquisitor back in, you can see there's a nice little space just there, which I decided to add in with that extra detail with the skull and candle. Now, most of the stonework won't be visible because it's hidden under the dress, but because I want her to be raised up slightly, I decided it would make more sense that I do the whole of the surface and then just add her on top rather than try and make her sit on the base and then have the slabs going sort of to the side. You'll also notice there's one issue here with the foot because obviously the foot has a bit of a base plate on which you're meant to glue down onto the model. I don't want to run the risk of cutting off that plastic, I think it'll be too difficult. However, once I've glued that down, I'm just going to add on some additional texture, maybe using the sterling mud just to cover up that gap. So that is the Inquisitor all complete. Now I just have to go away and paint her up. I'll hopefully do a full showcase video once she's been painted. I hope you've enjoyed this video. There's a couple more in this series that I want to do. There'll be a video focused on the demon host that I'll be using to go alongside my Inquisitor, as well as another video covering some of the acolytes that she will have with her. That's all for this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. And until the next time, take care.
If you watch regularly and enjoy these videos, please consider supporting me over on Patreon. Any support is greatly appreciated and it allows me to spend more time making these videos as they're quite time consuming to put together. If you'd like to support me, the link is in the description below. All my content is free and not behind a paywall, but I've included a few benefits just for my Patreons. I'd also like to give a huge thank you to my current Patreons. I really appreciate all of your support. You can also check out my online store where I sell resin conversion kits over at beyondthetabletop.com forward slash shop and my Patreon supporters get a special discount on there too. Lastly, I just want to say thanks again for watching this video. If you've enjoyed it and made it this far, please give it a like and share it with your friends. If you want to keep notified about future videos, make sure to subscribe and hit the bell icon for notifications. You can also find me on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter and over on the Lookout Sir 40k podcast. That's all for now. Until the next time, take care.